Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. Let's talk a little bit about Captain Sox, because, well, we just haven't addressed it enough, have we, when it comes to Justin Trudeau? One of the things that makes me cringeworthy with Justin Trudeau is his insignificant hubris that knows no bounds, that gives him the ability to believe that for some reason, Americans, the United Nations, the Easter, or the, the European Union, or any other outfit cares about what he thinks. Now, we've seen members of parliament in the U, U, uh, EU, sorry, I was going to say the UK, but the EU, like Christine Anderson, who have said that he's not acceptable, that he should spare them their presence. Uh, when it comes to Justin Trudeau at the United Nations this week, well, he's in New York to address the UN, and well, things aren't looking good for old Captain Tampon as we go into uh, this clip of his speech at the UN Assembly. Now, I want to stress here, I know it's been going around but he's done a little bit more on his trip to New York. We're going to, but not going to get into that. I did a poll on our community tab earlier today asking people, do you want me to cover Justin Trudeau's absolutely woke performance on the Colbert show? Everybody said no. Of course they said no. Nobody wants to listen to Justin. I'm going to try to limit how much we listen to Justin here. But let's just take an excerpt from his speech to the UN because, boy, something's really about to get funny here. Let's take a look. To allay people's anxiety... We need to create economic growth that is broadly shared because a fair and successful world is a peaceful one. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, Justin, but uh, the room's a little empty there. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares what Justin's doing. Nobody's there to really give a damn what he has to say. Um, <laughs> it's an empty room. Nobody at the United Nations cares about Canada. This is a perfect picture an example of what Justin Trudeau has done to Canada, what he has done to Canada's reputation. We were once at the forefront of people's respect. Uh, multiple countries said that Canada had a good image. This just shows you plain and simple that, well, people's interests in Canada are waning. We need to focus on what brings us together, not on what divides us. For Canada, that means re-engaging in global affairs through institutions like the United Nations. It doesn't serve our interests or the world's to pretend we're not deeply affected by what happens beyond our borders. Now, what's funny about that statement is that, well, we are affected about what happens beyond everybody's borders. We're affected financially because Justin Trudeau keeps giving our money away to every country that goes to war, except for Canada. Um, and not that Canada has gone to war, but he doesn't give money to Canadians. He doesn't help Canadians. When we have thousands upon thousands of people in other cities all across the country living in tents, when we have homeless population exploding, when we have essentially an open border to our country where people are just pouring in, claiming asylum, getting free handouts, free hotel rooms, while Canadian people suffer. Again, what was really funny about Justin Trudeau's trip to the United Nations and adding to the embarrassment of this clip at the UN, I'm not going to play any clips from Stephen Colbert because God forbid we get struck with a copyright, but this was the aftermath of Stephen Colbert's show. Justin Trudeau embarrasses Canada further by hanging out with uh, drag queen RuPaul. Not Rand Paul, <laughs> RuPaul. Um, he sashayed and shantayed his way into the green room to discuss with RuPaul. Um, Marty up north tweeting out here, did Trudeau just sign an autograph for a drag queen with the quote, your sponge worthy? Note, it's a Seinfeld episode for all you millennials. Again, he gives... Uh, one hell of a reference. I know people have speculated for a while. Did Justin Trudeau separate from his wife because he's gay? Um, I think this is Justin coming out of the closet. I think this is Justin formally admitting, hey, everybody, uh, I'm single and ready to mingle with, you know, the likes of RuPaul. Um, this disgusting clip, because again, this just shows Justin Trudeau on his, uh, in his preferred people court of Canada uh, as he takes photos and autographs with drag queens. Nothing unusual for Justin, but listen for the comment. Listen for the comment. Many people are going to say he's just being nice. He's he's just dropping fun little jokes and jabs. I, I don't think that's the case. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're not dressed right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Ah! <laughs> that's hilarious. I mean, if not, 
Sharpie. I wish you had a Sharpie so you could smile. Do you have a Sharpie? Oh my, okay, Prime Minister, you have to sign this. Oh my god, thank you, Adam. I got a sponge from Prime Minister Trudeau. You are sponge worthy. <laughs> I got a sponge from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Justin replying, you're sponge worthy. Of course, here's the, the photos of everything afterwards with RuPaul. Again, um, basically, <laughs> if you don't know the Seinfeld reference, sponge worthy, um, Elaine on the series uh, was using a form of birth control known as sponges. The, the, the distributor stopped selling them, so she had to decide if somebody was sponge-worthy before she'd essentially um, hop into bed with them. Uh, so here's Justin Trudeau telling RuPaul that uh, he's sponge-worthy. That's uh, beyond weird. But what I want to cover, without covering clips of what happened on Colbert, is this article from the National Post, because it, it really highlights just what is going on with Justin Trudeau and why this is essentially a nothing burger. Uh, for him to go to the UN, for him to waste taxpayer dollars. In fact, I'm curious what the bill's going to be when this was done for taxpayers. But the Wall uh, National Post, sorry, putting out appearance of the Colbert once again highlights Trudeau's weakness for U.S. media. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will be appearing on the broadcast of the Late Night Show on Monday, which was yesterday, in the latest example of Canada's leader's unusual weakness for American media appearances. In a Friday look-ahead schedule by CBS Television, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was scheduled to appear Monday on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Now, it was a woke mess. In fact, not only Justin Trudeau, but woke late-night host Stephen Colbert also refer referred to Pierre Polyev as a fascist, saying, quote, he was a fascist like Donald Trump. So again, it's the media gang up to try and look like, hey, we're hip, we're on the left, we get it. You know, Donald Trump bad, Orange Man bad, Pierre Polyev now bad as well. Um, this is what they think they're doing. This is, but, but the funny thing is, is that for the whole 10 people who tune in to watch Stephen Colbert, I'm sure that any of the numbers that were coming in for Stephen Colbert last night uh, were, a, were a boost from what they typically are, simply so that people could hate watch Justin Trudeau. Let's continue on to the article. It's not clear what Trudeau intends to discuss, but the Prime Minister was in New York City to make an appearance to the United Nations. His fellow guest on the broadcast will be drag queen RuPaul. In just last calendar year, Trudeau has also made dedicated appearances on the U.S. podcast today and explained in Freakonomics, uh, both which he used to pitch his latest federal budget back in 2015. Trudeau had only been Prime Minister for a matter of weeks before he was appearing on the cover of Vogue magazine. This has all been in sharp contrast to Trudeau's predecessors, all of whom generally got through their tenures with only the occasional quote to a US, U.S. wire service. This is even true of Brian Mulroney, easily the most overly pro-American Canadian leader of the past 50 years. When Mulroney addressed the joint session of U.S. Congress in 1988, his U.S. media appearances consisted exclusively of a 24-minute joint press conference with U.S. President Ronald Reagan. Now, what's even more funny... And kind of a funny note to put on this spin. Um, operator and owner of the counter signal, Kean Bexty, <laughs> who actually went to the show. Uh, he was given tickets. Um, what's funny is Kean Bexty um, is is out as a um, fully gay man. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's another Seinfeld reference for you. Uh, but uh, he he said, he tweets out here, good on him. I told them I was trans in the application. They gave me VIP tickets. I'm so excited. See you soon, Justin Trudeau. So again, Kean Bexty saying that he's trans. So he didn't even play the gay card. He just said, hey, I'm trans. Uh, just so they'd let him into the show. This shows you just how weak Stephen Colbert and his people are to think that, hey, we're we're getting in the right audience, the right people, we're virtue signaling in the right ways um, to get what we want done on our show, to have a certain image. Um, when you look again uh, and say, is that real? Yes, here's Key and Bexty, New York, is really neat, hanging out at Grand Central Terminal. Um, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic that Kean went there, that Kean went hopefully to embarrass Justin Trudeau. Um, <laughs> this... Essentially, again, guys, I know a lot of people didn't really want to cover it. I think it's worth noting that Trudeau at least embarrassed himself. Uh, but at the same time, he's also showing the world that we're a stain on the world's reputation, that Canada really has no 
place at the table when it comes to not only negotiating power, but being taken seriously as we've been laundering our money to all sorts of places like the Ukraine for so long that it essentially makes Canada look weak. Let me know what you guys think. Was Trudeau's trip to the UN and Stephen Colbert and everything else warranted? Do you think he should have uh, maybe tried to write a reasonable speech or do you think he should have just stayed home and maybe washed his socks? Let me know what you guys think down below. What do you think about Kian Bexty lying his way into getting VIP tickets for the show and what Colbert's company essentially looks like on the end of that stick? I know everybody's going to say, hey, it's mainstream prostitute media in the United States. That's how they do things. I'm all with you on that bandwagon, but let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. If it's your first time here, I hope this video's earned your subscription. Don't forget as you're hitting that button to hit your bell for notifications, join me live here on the channel each and every Friday night for Friday Night Fringe, our live streaming show where we talk about Everything that's happened this week in politics. We talk about uh, some quirky, funny stories, and we also have some back and forth within the community, joined by my beautiful wife, Mrs. Fringe, every Friday night here on the channel. We always look forward to chatting to you guys outside of making these videos. And we always look forward to hearing what you guys have to say outside of making them. And I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say this Friday, starting at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, again, here on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.